Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. If there really have been UFO landings in the United States, why isn't there any hard evidence? Why haven't UFOs appeared on radar? Ufologists answer that our government has purposely and systematically suppressed information about alien spacecraft. And they point to an astonishing case on a U.S. military base in Great Britain. For nearly 50 years, UFO researchers have maintained that the U.S. government has systematically withheld information about encounters with aliens. Such contact may have occurred in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. The U.S. government says it never happened. Some believe that alien technology is currently being tested in the notorious and top secret Area 51 in the Nevada desert. The U.S. government refuses to comment. But under the authority of the Freedom of Information Act, previously classified documents have been released. They shed light on what may have been an intentional U.S. government cover-up of UFO contact occurring in England in 1980. The 81st Tactical Fighter Wing of the U.S. Air Force was located 60 miles northeast of London between the towns of Bentwaters and Woodbridge. It was here on December 26, 1980, members of base security claimed to have witnessed one of the most bizarre events in UFO history. The whole thing was weird. It just didn't seem right. Airman First Class John Burroughs and his partner were on a routine patrol around the base perimeter when they spotted unusual activity in the nearby woods. My partner initially saw some strange lights. So we went ahead and looked at each other and we decided we better kind of see what's going on because it didn't seem normal. At the very same moment, the control tower at London's Heathrow Airport reported the sudden appearance of several unidentified flying objects on radar. I think if we would have been armed, we might have even fired on it. I mean, it really, there was whatever it was, scared us. I was going to bed and through the side windows here, um, I saw these lights. Local resident Jerry Harris was one of a handful of civilians who reported strange phenomena that night. He recalls the encounter. Well, they moved sort of sideways, this way, you know, then they'd go down and they'd come back up again. And, um, most peculiar. The next morning, British police investigated the area around the alleged sighting. They found three circular impressions in the ground, exactly 12 feet apart, forming a perfect equilateral triangle. The surrounding trees had been damaged. It looked like something had landed there, came straight down through the trees, and rested uh, long enough to leave three, four-inch indentations in the ground. I was kind of hoping we'd go out there and we wouldn't find anything. And we just, you know, it'd be like, because if you can't explain it, it's, it bothers you. The next night, strange lights were reported again. Deputy Base Commander Colonel Charles Halt quickly assembled a special investigative team to search the woods. Lights were observed moving in uh, geometric patterns, mainly in squares, everything traveling at right angles. They'd go for a set distance and then do a sharp left or right bank. Colonel Halt and his team not only witnessed the light phenomenon, but they were also able to document their sightings on film and audio tape. Listen to part of Halt's recording at the scene. Here he comes from the south. He's coming toward us now. Now we're observing what appears to be a beam coming down to the ground. It's unreal. 3.30, it was either 3.30 and the objects are still in the sky, although the one to the south looks like it's losing a little bit of altitude. So we're turning around and heading back toward the in the distance, you could see lights flying around, and you could see, like, a stream of white light that came down to the ground. Soon after that initial sighting, another strange UFO appeared to the airman, a single red hovering light. We followed it for quite a distance, two, three miles. All the time, it stayed just a bit ahead of us. Then, the most extraordinary event of the night occurred. It looked like a shaft of light came down from the sky. It was momentary, couldn't have lasted more than five seconds. But I observed it, Colonel Halt observed it, and the two other individuals with us observed it. It was like, it hurt your eyes almost, it was so bright. Because of this inexplicable encounter, a special unit from European headquarters was dispatched to Bentwaters to take over the investigation. We were told that whatever we saw out there from then on, we were not to call in on the radio or report in, that people were aware of that something had happened or something could still be going on. 
The team confiscated all physical evidence of the encounter, including Colonel Halt's tape recordings, films, and memos. All of that material was gathered up. It was considered technical intelligence. Therefore, it went to Ramstein Air Force Base. Now retired from Army intelligence, Clifford Stone was stationed at Hanau, West Germany at the time of the Bentwaters investigation. According to Stone, news about the UFO landing spread like wildfire. I know that they considered that craft to be under intelligent control, and they did not consider that intelligence to be of this earth. With so many credible witnesses, there's little doubt that something anomalous occurred that night. But what was it? There was no doubt it was an identified flying object, which is what a UFO is. The blue lights that we saw and what they were capable of doing could lead you to believe possibly that they were intelligent. It was not a natural phenomenon. It was some sort of a manned or unmanned craft, and it was being controlled by someone. Despite so much eyewitness testimony, skeptics maintain the encounter was not the result of otherworldly phenomena. Let's say that this wasn't a UFO incident. What is it that can cause highly trained Air Force security policemen who are armed to the teeth with automatic weapons, grenade launchers, pistols, what can cause them to run away from a light in the woods? Chuck DeCaro was a Defense Department correspondent for CNN who traveled to England to research the Bentwaters incident. He's heard many explanations for the strange lights. This was an important base. It had a nuclear weapon storage dump. If these guys were hallucinating, as some uh, debunkers have claimed, what were they doing guarding those self-same nuclear weapons the next day and the next week? Others have speculated that the UFO was a top secret US military aircraft used to test the responses of base security forces. We exercised on a regular basis through every possible contingency at the ground troops and there was no need for the Air Force to come up with something extra. There is another possibility involving technology known as psychotronic or radio frequency weapons. There are those experts in the area of radio frequency weapons who say that RF energy can be delivered in such a form as to have an effect on human psychology or physiology. Sightings of unexplained lights identical to those reported at Bentwaters had also been reported in the former Soviet Union. Experts suggest these reports may be the result of experiments using similar weaponry. Unfortunately, none of these theories can be fully explored because the U.S. Air Force has refused to acknowledge that any encounters occurred. Some believe there's been a cover-up. I ended up going to Korea, and I can't prove it, but there was, I really wasn't due for an assignment, and they kind of got me out of here in a hurry. Any attempt to gather physical evidence at the site is now impossible. The alleged landing site has been destroyed. When our sightings crew visited Bentwaters, this was all that remained of the woods. All, all that there, yes, the whole lot, 10,000 acres, was absolutely devastated. British UFO researcher Brenda Butler has been investigating the Bentwaters sighting since 1981. She claims that her efforts have been sabotaged by the U.S. and British governments. The Ministry of Defense have been on to us and telling us to keep quiet and, you know, not to say anything about it. Um, we, what we can't understand is why this case, when all the other cases we've been on, we've been allowed to talk about it. I have no doubt that our government and other governments are withholding information. They don't know what's going on, or if they do, they're not willing to share that information with the general populace. And sooner or later, it's all going to come out. It wasn't until one of the base commander's top secret memos was released in 1983 that any information about the Bentwaters UFOs was made public. The U.S. Air Force still refuses to comment. Could it have been a weapons experiment? Possibly. Could it have been a visitation from a UFO? Possibly. Is there a cover-up? Probably. Is there more to come from the Bentwaters incident? You bet. The United States Air Force continues to deny that a UFO encounter occurred at Bentwaters. Without the military's cooperation, the documents obtained through the Freedom of Information Act remain just one more tantalizing clue for scores of conspiracy theorists. They remain convinced that the government has top secret UFO information and plans to keep it that way.